What do you see when you look at this hex map? This, this is what I see. I see a swirling map of anxiety, a bunch of hexes that I will likely never fill as a DM or explore as a player. The more I try to wrap my head around these hexes, the more I search for hex crawl resources. And down I go into a rabbit hole of hexes from which there is no escape. For those of us who DM and deal with anxiety, just looking at a hex map can be a nightmare, a horror story, if you will. So I've attempted to simplify the process for myself, and if it helps any of you who are watching, that is great. I am not here to tell you how to run your hex crawl. Appropriate for the season, I have created a hex crawl of horror, but before I get into how I put this hex crawl together and what has made life simpler for me when it comes to hex crawls, if you're new to the channel, welcome in, and if you're a return visitor, welcome back. If you're not a subscriber yet and you want to be, well, go ahead and click that button down there. It says subscribe and you'll get videos like this in your inbox every week. So what is it that saved me from this hex crawl hell? It is the hex flower. And in my newest zine, Hex Crawl Horror, I am featuring the flower and also how to build out a smaller hex crawl. So it saves me a little bit of time. Let's check it out. All right. So here we are inside of my new Crit Happen zine. Hex Crawl of Horror, and uh, for those that may not know what a Hex Crawl is, a it's a way to run a role-playing game that uses a hex gridded map to help players explore an open world. And for myself, like I said, it, it, it can be uh, daunting to just look at all these hexes, and I make it way too difficult for myself, and maybe you feel the same way, and I'm thinking to myself, am I doing this right? Right? I'm, try, I'm comparing, I'm watching videos, I'm watching how they do it, Am I doing it? And it just causes me analysis paralysis. Now, there are several ways you can run a hex crawl. You can give players, PCs, an overview of the established setting or homebrew world or feed them information as they make new discoveries. You can provide adventure rumors, hooks to PCs to latch onto so that they can decide where they want to explore. You can use random encounter tables as you play to spice things up or to roll ahead of time for better planning. You can allow players to choose the direction they go through rumors or roll the dice and let luck decide. And you can use the adventures you have to populate your hex map or use random tables to determine the adventure. Now, in the case of this hex flower, I've created a story behind it and I call it the hexing. And the hexing is all about these witches, this coven that tried to get these artifacts together to control this power. And uh, it just went totally sideways and basically just destroyed the world to where now undead, demons, paranormal things. Um, it is all out there. And in the zine, I give you the background to all of this, as well as tables and other information. I'm going to share a little bit of that with you now. But basically, all you need to know is that everything is bad and things are just getting worse. So hexes traditionally are anywhere from six to 10 miles across. This is a traditional hex crawl map that you can populate with whatever you choose or make a couple of rolls from the tables that are provided in the zine. And then we move to the actual hex flower. And I found out about the hex flower from at Goblin's Henchman on YouTube. I'll put a link down below. And I like the idea of the hex flower because it narrows my focus. In the hexing, each flower is a territory. See what I did there? And I don't have to worry about filling up the whole map, just one hex at a time. And in the hexing, I'm using the center of the flower to determine who is in power over this territory. But based on the players and some of the other forces, that power can always change. So you can see here, I have dominating forces and a dominating power. The dominating power could be anything. It could be vampires, it could be werewolves, it could be hell, it could be witches, it could be the survivors. And then these other hexes around that are dominating forces, which can also be any of these other factions like the Dread, which is kind of a Cthulhu-ish type thing. Or it could be a horde of the undead just roaming through the land that your players have to deal with. So let me show you how I built it out a little bit more. So each hex has six points. So I've simplified my work by saying there are six areas for adventuring, but you can always add more or less if you like. And in this case, the dominating force for the entire territory will be, and I randomly rolled, the spirit world. So this could be poltergeist, this could be banshees, it could be any number of things that is controlling this hex. And then I rolled up locations, which I have a table in here that you can roll on and say, okay, what are going to be the key locations? The six key locations here are going to be a camp, temple, ruins, 
camp, camp, cave. And I rolled all this on the random tables. So then you have to decide, okay, the camp, what kind of camp is that? A camp of survivors? Is it a camp of marauders? And these are all places where players can start. And then I have the dominating forces, which is the dead. There are two cults, more dead, dragons, and the spirit world. So those dominating forces are going through that six mile area. And players are having to move through to go from the camp to the temple, from the temple to the ruins, whatever it may be, however they're moving around that area. These are the dominating forces that they're going to run into. But to give you an idea of how big six miles is, let me show you a map of my house and six miles around. As you can see, you can do this with your own house and see how many, see how many locations are there. See how many topographical elements you see. It really gives you an idea of how big six miles are and how these different factions move inside that six miles. So any of those dots, any of those cities there, those could be a camp or a temple or a ruins or a cave or whatever it may be. Do six miles around your house. I put a link down to how you can find that out down in the description. So do it for yourself and then look around your area and get inspired. So now let me show you how I placed it around. So for clarification, there is only one dominating power central to a hex flower, but there are dominating forces always trying to usurp the power. So you can see where I placed it, six points, there are ruins, camp, temple, cave, camp, camp. And then in between those, I randomly put, well, the dragons are going to be up north. The spirit world's going to be down south. Then you have the dead, southwest and northeast. And then you have the cults, northwest and southeast. And that gives you as a DM a way for how the players can travel. Because they might want to go and say, well, I, we're, at, we're starting at the camp. Well, in between... The camp and the ruins, there are some cultists that they might have to deal with. Or if they're starting the ruins and they want to head to a camp of survivors, well, there are dragons in the way. So as I tell you here, I'm not going to do all the work for you because it's your table and you run it as you please. But I do offer some key questions inside the zine that will help you establish what your hex may look like. Now, if you're interested in more information or to see the entire zine, I'm going to go live tonight, Tuesday, September 10th, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'm going to walk through the whole zine and all the things you get in there. It's live right now. So I'm going to put a link down below. You say, look, I don't need to see any more. I want it. Great. It's pay what you want. But if you feel like you need to see more before you make a purchase, that's fine too. Catch me tonight. You can ask questions and hopefully I will have some answers. But I'd love to hear from you. What is your experience with hex trolls? Do you find it difficult? Do you find it hard? Does this hex flower make it simpler for you? Leave me some comments down below. And if you've liked anything I've said in this video, we'll go ahead and click the thumbs up button. That tells me you like it and you want more content like this. But that's it for today. Hopefully I will catch you tonight, live 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Come hang out, ask your questions. But if you can't make it tonight, that's okay. I have plenty of videos right here. You can check out DM tips and other things. Hopefully you'll check those out. But that is it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.